In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Welcome, my dear brothers and sisters, to this evening of prayer, the Taize way of prayer. And in this time of deep prayer, we ask the good God, through the intercession of Holy Spirit of Peña Francia, to dispel the darkness of the pandemia that has wrought pain, suffering to the world and unto the lives of so many people. We pray for our government, all the governments, civil societies, and all those involved in fighting this pandemia. We pray for those who have lost their lives in this battle, to those who are struggling to survive and we pray for strength and consolation for those, those who have lost their loved ones. We gather together in faith, in hope, in love, because this is the ultimate meaning of prayer.
Heavenly Father, Lord of mercy and of love, we praise and glorify your wonderful name as we celebrate the memory of St. Augustine, Bishop and Doctor of the Church. In your great love, you have guided people towards their conversion. In the struggle of Augustine towards holiness, you have shown us that even in the midst of the darkness of sin, you do not abandon your children. In Augustine's search for the truth, you have shown us that wisdom is available for anybody who sincerely look for the true, the good, and the beautiful. In his desire for love and community, you have shown us that it is possible for us to live in one mind and one heart on the way to you. As we gather together for this night's tise, we ask you, O Lord, for the gift of wisdom and understanding. We pray that we may be spiritually prepared to make the most of this encounter with you. Most of all, let us feel your love and mercy. We continue to be worried and alarmed by the increasing number of COVID-19 patients in the entire country. Assure us of your continued presence and your loving hand. Heal your people and heal our land. All of these we ask in the name of Jesus, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Ah, 
Mas ako ay binalik mo At gawing tapat sa iyo Kung magkagayon poon Aking tuturo ang lumapit sa iyo Ang naghihirap at makasalanan Diyos ko sa aking likain Tapat na puso at sa loobin be with you and with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to matthew glory to you o lord jesus told his disciples this parable the kingdom of heaven will be like 10 virgins who took their lambs and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones, when taking their lambs, brought no oil with them. But the wise brought a flask of oil with their lambs. Since the bridegroom was long delayed, they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, there was a cry. Behold, the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those virgins got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones said to the wise, Give us some of your oil. For our lamps are going out. But the wise ones replied, No, for there may not be enough for us and you. Go instead to the merchants and buy some for yourselves. While they went off to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went into the wedding feast with him. Then the door was locked. Afterwards, the other virgins came and said, Lord, Lord, open the door for us. But he said in reply, Amen, I say to you, I do not know you. Therefore, stay away, for you know neither the day nor the hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> My dear <clears throat> brothers and sisters, the prayer of every Christian community, like our community this evening, is enriched, empowered, and made fruitful by the Word of God, especially the words of Jesus in the Gospels. When Jesus taught, every teaching is meant to open our hearts, to be inspired by His words, so that from our hearts we can offer 
a prayer pleasing to God. And this evening, we are offered the parable of the ten virgins. This is taken from Matthew chapter 25. By way of background, we know that the Gospel of Matthew is called the Gospel of Discipleship. Jesus called a new disciple to be his new community. And he formed them by teaching them the Beatitudes, how to relate in a new manner, how to pray, and above all, how to relate to one's neighbors. And Jesus told also his disciples to be ready at all times, especially at the end time, wherein he would come again. When? Jesus did not specify. Because this is part of being a disciple, to be always alert, ready for the coming of the Messiah, the second coming of the Messiah. And today's gospel is part of that end time, of that second coming of the Son of Man. And in the parable, Jesus underscores basic attitudes, postures, that we Christians must hold on to so that we would be ready to welcome the Messiah, the bridegroom. In the Jewish tradition, the groom goes to the bride's parents to fetch the bride and to bring the bride to the bridegroom's parents for the wedding ceremony. And in the house of the bride, bride, uh, the bride, they are the bridesmaid, ready to welcome the groom, so that the groom and the bride, they will march unto the house of the groom. And we know what transpired. Five of these virgins are prudent, so they have enough oil, but the others, it's called, they are called foolish, or we would say reckless, because they failed to have some reserved for the oil. And when the groom came, they were in a dilemma. Therefore, they have to step out and provide themselves with the necessary oil. But alas, it's sad to say, when they came back, the doors were closed. And Jesus says, stay awake. The Greek word used was Gregorio, which means be alert, be focused, be ready. Provide yourselves with what is necessary. So stay away doesn't necessarily mean not to sleep, because we know that the virgins, all of them slept. But what separated them is that the five were prepared, have enough oil to proceed in the joyful march or procession unto the house of the groom. While the other five, the reckless ones, probably so caught by the event, by the joy of the event, forgot what is central, that they should provide themselves with what is necessary so that there would really be a joyful procession. Now what does this parable teach us? And how does it feed our prayer? First, it tells us the reality that as disciples, we have an end game. There is a time that we would have to face and welcome and meet 
our Lord. As St. Paul says, we do not have here a lasting city. In our current situation, we hear of sad news of a sudden, even shocking passing away of a beloved one or a friend. Unexpected death. It is on this unexpected and shocking death that we really crumble, so to say, and realize the danger of this pandemia. So we have to make ourselves always ready and alert that any time will come that we have to face the Lord. The when, we are not in control. But the how we live our lives, we can control. And this is where the next step comes in. When Jesus says, stay awake, be alert. This is the how we as Christians should live. Always, always focused. Always in a posture of welcome and readiness, and most especially, always provided with what is necessary to welcome Jesus. And what is this necessary? First and foremost, a heart that is contrite and sorrowful. A heart that is simple and pure a heart that is grateful and joyful. God comes to our hearts. We have to open and let God dwell in us as he wants us to dwell in him. Did not Jesus say, dwell in me as I dwell in you? And this is the meaning of prayer, a heart-to-heart -heart relationship with God. Today's gospel tells us to be alert, to be focused, above all to keep our hearts open so that Jesus, our Lord and Savior, may dwell within us and we in him and then we will experience the joy of a wedding banquet here on earth and most especially in the kingdom of the father amen
For many centuries, you have sent your church, great and holy men and women, who have served as our guide and inspiration. May the example of St. Augustine lead us to the spirit of truth, so we may become like the wise virgins awaiting the coming of the Lord. In every petition, we shall pray. O Lord, hear my prayer. O Lord, hear my prayer. When I call, answer me. O Lord, hear my prayer. O Lord, hear my prayer. Come and listen to me. O Lord, hear my prayer, O Lord, hear my prayer, when I call, answer me. O Lord, hear my prayer, O Lord, hear my prayer, come and listen. Lord God, St. Augustine once said, Rome has spoken. The controversy is over. We pray for the Pope, our Archbishop Orlando, and all the clergy, that they may be compassionate towards all those who are lost. With their words and actions, may they show the path towards you. We pray to the Lord. O Lord, hear my prayer. O Lord, hear my prayer. When I call, answer me. O Lord, hear my prayer. O Lord, hear my prayer. Come and listen to me. For our civic, civil, and political leaders, that they may become sources of hope in this time of the pandemic. May they be able to lead the nation towards healing and recovery. We pray to the Lord. O Lord, hear my prayer. O Lord, hear my prayer. When I call, Answer me, O Lord, hear my prayer, O Lord, hear my prayer, come and listen to me. For all our frontliners, may the Lord give them strength so that they can continue taking care of the sick, maintaining peace and order and contributing to the well-being of society. We pray to the Lord. O Lord, hear my prayer. O Lord, hear my prayer. When I call, answer me. O Lord, hear my prayer. O Lord, hear my prayer. Come and listen to me. For all those who are sick, may they receive God's healing. May their families be given the strength so that they can provide support towards their sick relatives and friends. We pray to the Lord. O Lord, hear my prayer. O Lord, hear my prayer. When I call, answer me. O Lord, hear my prayer. O Lord, hear my prayer. Come and listen to me. For those who need most our prayers, especially the prisoners, the unemployed, and the depressed, for those whom we promise to pray for, and for our own personal intentions. For all these, we pray to the Lord. O Lord, 
Lord, hear my prayer. O oh Lord, hear my prayer. When I call, answer me. O oh Lord, hear my prayer. O oh Lord, hear my prayer. Come and listen to me. O oh Lord, hear my prayer. O oh Lord, hear my prayer. When I call, answer me. O oh Lord, hear my prayer. O oh Lord, hear my prayer. Come and listen to me. Lord, in you we find the fullness of wisdom and love. May the example of St. Augustine and the wise virgins of the gospel be a source of inspiration and hope for all of us journeying towards you. Help your people through this pandemic and may our faith and love never waver in spite of the hardships and trials we are experiencing. We ask all of these through Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. With the words Christ gave us, we pray. God, Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for gathering us together in this night's Tise. We have been refreshed by your word and have been strengthened by your presence. In spite of our own worries and anxieties, you made us feel your loving hand. Continue to watch over us and envelope us with the mantle of your protection. As we remember our brothers and sisters who are battling against COVID-19, we ask you, Lord, to be with them. Heal them and keep them close to your heart. Strengthen our resolve to search for the truth. In an age where fake news and misinformation have caused so much havoc and misunderstanding, May we take it upon ourselves to genuinely ask for wisdom and understanding in the hope that we may, one day, like Augustine, find the truth that our hearts are aching for. We ask this through Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen.
Mary is our mother, and Mary is with us in prayer. We ask her to intercede for us, to lift our prayers to the Blessed Trinity. And so together we pay homage to her, saying, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. We bow our heads for the blessing. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We carry in our hearts the joy of serving the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining us tonight as we pray in the way of Dizé. To our beloved Archbishop, Rolando J. Tria Terona, it's the fifth month of this nightly habit, and tonight was extra special. Thank you for praying with us. For the technical assistance of the Archdiocese of Cáceres live streaming team, and of course, to Father Jerome Pilayo, Father Mike Marzan, Fray Nonoy Arig OSA, Fry Johnny Esmilia OSA for the prayers, voiceovers, and continued support. Just na magbalos. Please join us again tomorrow at 6.30 p.m. Our today will be aired live from the parish of St. Raphael the Archangel in Pili. Thank you very much and have a good night. Thank you.